This brief video provides an overview of the key concepts covered in Chapter 3 on Operations Strategy. The first concept identifies how firms gain competitive advantage. Now, competitive advantage refers to a firm's ability to achieve market and financial superiority over its competitors. It's essentially how a firm wins the game. One of the keys to developing a sustainable competitive advantage is understanding the wants and needs of customers in a variety of customer segments. We can call these customer expectations. Now, once a firm understands the customer's expectations, it can deliver an attractive customer benefit package to meet those expectations. This is described in more detail in Chapter 1, but we can use McDonald's as an example. Here, you can see the customer benefit package illustrates the primary food and service that's surrounded by peripheral goods and services such as playgrounds, toys, and even the Ronald McDonald House charities. The other key to developing competitive advantage is by building and leveraging operational capabilities to support desired competitive priorities. So again with McDonald's, McDonald's competes on the basis of speed and responsiveness, so their entire operating system from ordering to food prep to payment emphasizes speed over all else. The next key concept digs deeper into understanding customer expectations. By getting close to customers through market research, focus groups, employee feedback, or customer surveys, firms can identify two very important things, order qualifiers and order winners. Order qualifiers are basic customer expectations, essentially the minimum performance level required to stay in business. So for example, if you're running a donut shop, you better make good donuts. And who doesn't like a Krispy Kreme donut, right? Order winners are goods and service features and performance characteristics that differentiate one customer benefit package from another and win the customer's business. Here's where we can think about Apple's integrated mix of products and supporting services that attract and retain customers. Next, Chapter 3 describes how customers use three different attributes to evaluate the quality of goods and services. Starting on the left, Customers can employ easy-to-evaluate search attributes, which a customer can determine prior to purchasing goods or services. Basically, here's where a customer knows or has a pretty good idea of what they want or are looking for. A house, a car, clothes, coffee. Next, on the opposite end, on the right, are more difficult-to-evaluate credence attributes. These represent any aspects of a good or service that the customer must believe in but cannot personally evaluate even after purchase or consumption. How good were those legal services you received? Did that mechanic that worked on your car have any leftover screws or bolts? In the middle are the experience attributes. These can be discerned only after purchase or during consumption or use. How does your meal taste? Are you enjoying your vacation? Does your phone take good pictures? Together, these three attributes make up the goods and services continuum, which shows that high goods, or typically more tangible content, is easier to evaluate, whereas high services, or more intangible content, is more difficult to evaluate. This is important because knowing what customers go through to evaluate goods and services helps firms develop and deliver better goods and services. The next concept illustrates the basis upon which firms compete. We can call these competitive priorities, and they represent the strategic emphasis that a firm places on certain performance measures and operational capabilities within a value chain. There are essentially five basic competitive priorities. The first is competing on having the lowest cost. Walmart is the classic example of a low cost priority and its entire operational focus is about achieving the lowest cost of doing business. Quality is the second priority. This is a more nebulous priority since quality is very subjective and depends on the, how the firm defines quality. Honda and Toyota emphasize the build quality and reliability of their cars and their operations are focused on achieving high reliability. We also cannot underestimate the contribution of quality to profitability by impacting both the revenues and costs. Emphasis on improved quality of design can result in higher perceived value that enables firms to charge higher prices and also increase market share, both of which contribute to increased revenues and ultimately higher profitability. Improved quality of conformance, on the other hand, contributes to lower manufacturing costs and service costs, which also contribute to higher profitability. Time is the third priority. This is all about quick response, short wait times, or quick delivery. 
FedEx and McDonald's both have operational focus on time. Fourth is flexibility, both in the design of goods and services and meeting demand. Flexibility is also manifested in the concept of mass customization, which is being able to make whatever goods and services the customer wants in any volume, at any time, for anybody, anywhere, for any organization, any place in the world. General Motors produces different models of vehicles with a variety of options allowing for a flexible product offering all around the world. Starbucks offers a very high flexibility in being able to make your latte just how you like it. The fifth competitive priority is innovation. This is the discovery and practical application of commercialization of a device or a method or any idea that differs from existing norms. Historically, we can talk about PCs, iPods, touchscreen iPhones, electric cars, and even Uber or Lyft. These are all examples of innovations. This is a difficult priority to maintain, however, because it requires large and sustained investment in R&D to keep the innovation going. Do you know anybody that owns a Blackberry these days? The next concept introduces us to operations management and strategic planning. It all starts with strategy itself, which can be defined in a number of ways. For our purposes, strategy is a pattern or plan for integrating an organization's major goals, policies, and activities into a cohesive whole. Strategy both supports and is supported by a set of core competencies or strengths that are unique to a particular organization. For example, a core competency for Apple could be product design. At the higher levels, we have corporate, business, and functional strategies which consider the markets in which firms will compete, how it will compete in those markets, and how the functional areas like marketing and finance will align to support the business level strategies. These are important, but our emphasis is on operations strategy. Operations strategy is the set of decisions across the value chain that supports the implementation of higher level business strategies. This is all about the details involved in getting things done. An important part of operational strategy today is sustainability. This is more of an organizational strategy than a competitive priority and includes environmental, social, and economic sustainability. The other element to operations strategy is the global supply chain, which is comprised of many multinational enterprises which source, market, and produce goods and services in several countries in order to minimize costs, maximize profit, customer satisfaction, and even social welfare. The last major concept in the chapter is a framework for operation strategy. Here's where we'll look at Hill's strategy development framework. On the right are corporate objectives and marketing strategy which impacts operations. In the middle, we have the elements that contribute to meeting customer expectations and make up the customer benefit package. The emphasis here, however, is on the operation strategy part of the framework, which focuses on two sets of choices that must be made to align operations with strategy. The first is operations decision choice. This is where management must decide what type of process structure is best suited to produce goods and services. Using McDonald's as an example here, we can think about what technologies will be employed in ordering and food prep. Where are the stores located and what is the optimal size for each location type? How often will inventory be replenished? The second is infrastructure choice. This focuses on the non-process features and capabilities of the organization. What type of workforce will McDonald's rely on and how will they be trained and compensated? How does McDonald's develop new products and control quality? All in all, we now have a better understanding of how a firm's overall strategy and knowledge of customer expectations helps develop and sustain competitive advantage. We can appreciate how important the role of operations really is in turning all of that into reality.